Hello, my name is Ola, and I'm going to break into Film Theory Ending the Salad Fingers Mystery by the Film Theory. Uh, yeah, this was recommended to me by Jethro Henderson. Thank you for the recommendation. Um, I'm sorry for the long wait, man. I had to take a break, I, you know. Uh, but uh, I'm back, and uh, of course, you know, uh, you know, with the uh, Thanksgiving uh, holiday coming. Of course, I'm going to have to take another one. But, of course, I'll be back. Uh, but, anyway, um, yeah, the mystery of Sound Fingers. Uh, honestly, uh, Matt Pat really has to do um, uh, videos of the recent uh, Sound Fingers episodes because even though... Uh, it might seem that it kind of like wrapped up when really it really didn't because I think uh, since then there's been like I think two uh, more episodes, recent episodes that have came out, uh, the last one being over uh, seven months ago. So I hope Matt Pat does an episode of that one. Maybe he will, maybe not. I don't know yet. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, let's check this out, see what uh, Matt's... Uh, uh, you know, his, you know, like, uh, solve the mystery of, you know, the end of Sal Fingers. Uh, yeah, let's check this out. And if you want to like, comments, grab my chat. You can if you don't want to. That's fine, too. Here we go. Finally over salad fingers. It's finally time. Uh, pardon? Time for part two of your theory. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, and I hope you're ready because in honor of Halloween, it's time we head once more into the twisted mind of Salad Fingers. Last episode, we established that Salad Fingers is set in the UK during the year 1939, mm. trapped in his own mind and forced to relive various memories from World War I. We also saw the recurring theme of Salad Fingers feeling trapped by and abandoning babies, and how his fractured mind constantly hops between different personalities. But what does it all mean? How do these individual pieces add up to one overall narrative. And what the heck does the ending mean? You've had to wait long enough, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. When looking at the 10 episodes of Salad Fingers, there's a definite shift midway through the series. The first five episodes are filled with bizarre moments, unexplained events, strange characters, and veiled plot lines, but it's in episode six, present, that things start to feel weightier, much more intentional. It's this episode that makes it clear that the random, disturbing moments sprinkled through the series Series aren't just there for shock value, but rather possess a deeper meaning crucial to unraveling the plot of it all. The episode revolves around the first of the finger puppets, Jeremy Fisher, giving the titular present of a horse to Salad Fingers, a gift that seems completely arbitrary until we see old Horace Horse Collar appear again in one of the <laughs> final and most gruesome moments from the series, Episode 10's visit to Dr. Papanak, where the doctor is launched through the air and latches onto the side of the horse, tearing into his stomach. Dumbass. As an animal lover, it's brutal to watch as the horse mm -hmm. stares at salad fingers and cries. So clearly these moments are highly symbolic, but symbolic of what, exactly? Well, let's hop back into episode 6 to figure it out. Jeremy Fisher appears and Salad greets him by saying, Jeremy Fisher, I, I, I thought you were out fighting the Great War. So apparently it's a surprise to see that Jeremy has returned home from the war so early. But this is a line that takes on a whole new tone just a few minutes later when, in the same episode, Salad repeats it again. Jeremy Fisher, I thought you were out fighting the Great War. 
things have gotten serious in a hurry. But why is Salad Fingers suddenly so aggressive towards Jeremy? To truly understand that, we need to first <laughs> piece together their conversation. And piece together is an accurate description because believe it or not, the conversation happens in two chunks, separated out and removed from one another. One side of the conversation happens when Salad is out playing with Horace Horse Collar at the local toilet, and the second half <sighs> is in the house directed at the finger puppets. What seems like two fragmented streams of thought, when spliced together, actually gives us one completed conversation between Jeremy and an angry father, both played by Salad Fingers' fractured mind. Here it is, properly laid out. Jeremy Fisher, I thought you were out fighting the Great War. P pardon I'd like a word with you. I, I don't understand. Uh, I'm not one for accusations, but this one's cast iron. What, what is this? I've seen you tailgating my daughter with aspirations of deflowering her rose. N no, th th this isn't true. You've got the wrong bloke, squire. I don't make mistakes, comrade. This one's textbook. Flash the salad fingers eating a version of himself, and you're left with crystal clear storytelling, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know about <laughs> you, but it makes so much more sense now. Yeah, right. What we see mm -hmm. in this pivotal moment from the series is a father figure actively threatening a former soldier, Jeremy, for trying to seduce and deflower his daughter. Deflower, you know, take yeah. a roll in the hay with her, create the beast with two backs, break out the old horizontal mambo. All right, enough of roast the old hot dog. I'm done now. Remember, this is Salad <laughs> rehashing past memories, so the fact that he eats his puppet in the end, or cannibalizes the head of some other Salad Fingers, seems to indicate that this conversation didn't quite end all that well for Jeremy, most likely with the father killing him. Extreme? Maybe. But it seems like the father's fears about Jeremy might have been well-founded. You see, think for a minute about the horse Jeremy gives to Salad, and then remember the fact that it appears again in a doctor's office to have its stomach ripped out. Knowing what we know about the accusations against Jeremy, let's say for a second that he is indeed trying to deflower this young girl, and what's more, that he succeeds in doing so. Under this context, Jeremy giving Salad Fingers the present of a horse is symbolic of him getting the girl pregnant. Likewise, that means she would need to go see a doctor to have things taken care of, be it giving birth, or, on the flip side, having the baby aborted. And that's the memory we see Salad relive in episode 10, as, at the doctor's office, Salad once again flips through a couple personalities where he starts as the girl getting examined by the doctor. I suppose you'll be checking me for nimpers and camel spots. <laughs> a girl who really enjoys her examination a whole lot. Before snapping into a new persona, this time that of the mother encouraging her daughter while the baby is being born. I, I know it hurts. Just try and sit still whilst the doctor eats your blood. Ah, the miracle of childbirth at the hands of what? a Swiss Army Knife doctor. And for as gruesome as this scene is, we can confidently say that she gives birth since the title of this episode is Birthday. So we're now left with a million dollar question. Whose birthday is it? Why, it's none other than our good friend, the second and most crucial finger puppet, Hubert Cumberdale. There are actually plenty of hints to confirm this sprinkled throughout the videos. Not only does Salad Fingers tell us at the beginning of episode 10 that it is Hubert's birthday today, <laughs> As it's Hubert's birthday. But also, in a very short scene after the doctor's <laughs> visit, we see the important visual of Hubert being abandoned on the ground, surrounded by branches. Now, as I covered last episode, baby imagery is mm -hmm. everywhere in this series, especially babies being abandoned, with Mr. Branches from episode 9 being one of the strongest examples. So to depict Hubert lying there amongst a bunch of broken branches, all while a tree has somehow grown between Salad Fingers' legs, is an important visual symbol. Hubert is clearly the baby. But there are other hints sprinkled throughout the series as well. For instance, in episode 8, Salad, adopting the voice of a scolding parent, kicks Hubert off the bed into a tray of muck, saying, Scrub that muck off at once, Hubert Cumberdale. I'll have no dirty immigrants in my house. It's not what just an insult, it's pointing to the fact that Hubert was born of a black father, Jeremy Fisher, which, during the World War I era, was a 
big deal. This was a time in history when immigration into the UK was on the rise due to the war. As a result, what's known as scientific racism flourished, a time in which white Europeans used false scientific claims to prove that they were the superior race. Things like saying that the Caucasian brain was anatomically larger than other races, or relating facial structure to overall intelligence. That, coupled with the increased immigration caused by the war, resulted in attitudes like the one Salad Fingers expresses in this moment. It's a key point of seeing Hubert ostracized by his own family because of his parentage. It's even reflected in the way Hubert tastes. In episode 2, we see that Hubert... Oh, you taste like soot and poo. Again, indicating a different status than someone like Marjorie, who tastes like sunshine dust. Hubert is simply considered dirty or unclean. How does this all fit with the ending? As a refresher, Salad Fingers encounters a table with five other Salad Finger-looking creatures, except each is physically mutilated in some way. At the head of the table is a sixth chair, empty and presumably for him. Salad is visibly uncomfortable at first, until a mysterious pole lowers down with a gift, a hat made out of the remains of the now-dead Milford cubicle. The present makes him feel at home, and the series ends with him saying in triumph, I shall wear it from here to the grave. What a truly special day. So WTF? Seriously, we just saw a horse get ripped apart and now this is our big ending? Well, yes, actually, and here's why. Salad Fingers is Hubert Cumberdale, the child born out of wedlock that never found his place, always being ostracized by a family that never wanted him in the first place. And this ending shows that he finally feels as though he's found acceptance, a place where he fits in. He's found his family. Granted, it's a family of deformed mutants who don't actually acknowledge his existence, but hey, it's enough for him, and who am I to take that away from our little green hero? So first, how do we know that Hubert and Salad Fingers are one and the same? Well, it's worth noting that after the doctor scene in the forest, Hubert, as we discussed, gets left behind. Suddenly, when Salad Fingers is back at the house, the birthday party is no longer for Hubert, it's for him. He's the one the presents are for, and he's also the one excited about how the other guests remembered him on his big day. But for me, I thought you'd all forgotten. It's also worth noting that randomly, Hubert is wearing a top hat in this episode. And what gift does Sally get at the very end of the video? A, a similar looking top hat. But it goes beyond that. The Hubert puppet is also the only one to be able to change forms, becoming black goo that burns to the touch. Unlike the other finger puppets, this one is supernatural, a construct of Salad Fingers' <laughs> mind, Jester. unlike the nice. other characters which are more grounded in reality. Hubert is also seen the most, and is one that we see in life-size scale multiple times. We've been sharing <laughs> Salad's Jesus own Christ. memories, the... but despite all of this, he also tends to only interact with Salad Fingers' true personality, none of the other characters that Salad Fingers hops between. Both Marjorie and Jeremy interact with other personalities, the angry father, the disappointed husband, but Hubert seems mostly connected to the true Salad Fingers. So if that's all the case, then it makes sense why this ending is so moving for Fingers. In episode 8, we see just how lonely he is, so much so that he keeps a memorial of hairs, five different hairs, each one a different shade and color. You all look so beautiful together, a gay little quintet their mementos of his lost family. At the end of the episode, he's forced to get rid of them, something that is so devastating that he ends the episode by crying in the corner of his safety cupboard. So we have five hairs, but also five different people at that final table. Coincidence? I think not. In the end, I have no solid proof, but I can only assume that this scene is meant to be Salad Fingers being reunited with the five people in his life who've abandoned him in some way. People who've either died or disowned him. Scenes that we've witnessed across the series. Some combination of the father figure we saw in episode 4, who fled to France afraid of being caged by a baby, Kenneth, his younger brother from shore leave, who either died young or during the Great War, Auntie Bainbridge, probably represented by the gray hair, and the most likely candidate for the voice of Roger the Radio, a woman cold and unforgiving to Salad Fingers as he was growing up, Marjorie Stewart Baxter, Salad's wife from episode 9, the wife who left him to care for their baby alone, and then Yvonne, the baby he just didn't know how to handle and had to give away. Maybe even his his mother, who, if the episode 10 doctor's appointment is any indication, potentially died in childbirth. Five hairs and five lost loved ones. Run away, dead, or disappointed. Leaving Salad Fingers, or should I say Hubert, alone in his made-up reality, stuck in time and trapped in his own unforgiving wasteland. That's why the final moment is so important. The platoon is all there, and the gift he's given is a hat. A friend hat. Like the one he gave to Literally. Hubert back in episode 5. 
he's finally accepted. He's found his place at the table. It's as though Salad Fingers has finally come to grips with who he is, leaving the puppet behind in the woods and being born again into his true role as Hubert. So the episode titled Birthday actually has a double meaning. Green monsters deserve some love too. What a truly special day. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Oh, and full disclosure, I still have no idea what's the deal with Milford Cubicle or why it's his skin making the friend hat. Maybe it's just a remnant of the real world poking in. I don't know. I'm a theorist. I'm not a miracle worker. <laughs> yeah, um... Again, dude, you have some catching up to do, because, yeah... Episode 10 was not the last episode. Like, like I said, like there's been, uh, uh, like two or three ep episodes that have come out since. Like, dude, you, you got some catching up to do, Matt Pat. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, he, he could be right. He could be right about all that. But I don't know. I just think he's just kind of reaching. I don't know. Because, uh, I mean, like, the guy who created Salad Fingers, I don't think he's ever come out and said, like, uh, given, explained exactly what is going on. Just, you know, all this, it's just like one WTF after the other. Like, <laughs> or maybe he has, and I just haven't seen it yet. I don't know. Uh, but. If, if if that's, I mean, that could be just one theory. It could be right. Probably not. I don't know. <laughs> but of course, like I said, the story continues on after that. And, uh, and I think it will still continue on. Uh, uh, but eh, I think, I think it's just pretty much just, just just left to us man like and yeah it is pretty freaky how like um uh, like the conversation at the beginning it's like uh it's 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 like scrambled up you know uh and that is pretty clever the way how Matt Pat pieced it together uh and yeah, I remember being a kid and seeing that part where uh, Salad Fingers eats another version of him. I was like, what the, f what the hell? <laughs> and yeah, the whole thing with the freaking like tower, the thing coming down and like, oh, it's a hat. like, <laughs> And it's made out of human skin. Like, what the f Oh, that was just, just so messed up. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that could be the answer to all that. I don't know. But, but like Matt Pat said, he's just a virus. He's not a miracle worker. Like, <laughs> don't know about the whole, like, making a person out of a hat thing. Like, that was messed up. <laughs> That was so, so messed up. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my reaction to Film Theory ending the Sod Fingers mystery, which, again, it's not the ending because there's, like, two more episodes after this. And I'm pretty sure the guy that created it is working on some other episodes for it. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, everyone, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.